This video will be covering some software tools for IoT hacking, more specifically firmware analysis. So the first tool we're going to look at here is FirmWalker. So this is a script that helps you extract sensitive information and useful information out of a firmware file system. So as you can see here, when we come to the GitHub page, and I'll put the link in the description, it gives you some of the features it has. So it'll look for Etsy shadow and Etsy password files. It'll look for SSL directories. And it looks for a lot of useful and key information. Down here, we also see how we would use FirmWalker. It also has static code analysis, but you don't need that by default. And it shows you how we're going to have an output file. Down here, there's some example files that you could test with, or you could test with the firmware that we're going to use in this video because you can find it online. Uh, it's a TP Link firmware. Uh, down here, are some links to Craig's stuff. So pretty much all you want to do is come to here and you'll just git clone this. So it'll look something like this. Git clone and then you paste in the URL that you got from GitHub. And then you'll have a directory called FirmWalker. Once you cd into FirmWalker, you'll see you have some data, logo, license, or readme, pretty much everything that's on the GitHub. But most importantly is our firmwalker.sh because that's the executable file. So the first thing when we look at firmwalker is it needs a path to the root file system for the firmware you're looking at. So you need a path to the root file system. So if you extracted the firmware in some of the ways that I showed in my video, especially with the tool, um, you'll have this right here. You'll have a bin file. And FirmWalker can't handle that straight out of the box. So what I would recommend is using binwalk. We'll do tech M E. We'll just uh, give it the firmware file. So now binwalk will run and it will expand the entire .bin file into a whole file system. Now if you see here, we get the extracted file system. Uh, tac m makes a new directory and e will expand everything. So now when we cd into this firm bin extracted, and we run ls again, you see we get the squash root, squash fs root. So this is the root file system of our firmware. So what we can just do here is print our working directory, copy this, and we know we need this file. So firmwalker, and then we just put in squashfs, and you can tab, it will autocomplete. Next, the next argument you can is optional, you can leave it blank, or you can give it a name so maybe tp link loot.txt we'll call it and now when we run the command you can see it's scraping and pulling all this interesting information like here we have a bunch of emails here we have a bunch of urls but if we wanted to maybe do something more with that data we have here now a text file containing all the same data so we could just cat that data again and just get the same output. Now from here, these are all things we might want to look into in our firmware. It's not going to straight up just give us this information, but it will point us in the right direction. So here we have secrets, we have some private keys, some telnet information, um, SSL information, 
drop bear. And as you can see here, we actually have the etc password dot back dak, which is something I pointed out in my last video. So we know it's in etc, so we go to the etc directory. And here we're looking for the password dot bak file. So now if we just cat this file, we can see some useful information like users and this hash that we went over in a separate video. The best way to find the password associated with this hash is to Google it. But we can look for other useful information in FirmWalker that we would have to otherwise do manually. Like here we can go to any of these files that contain passwords. So let's see if any of these actually contain passwords. So we see that they're all in, well, some of them are bin. As you can see, this is BusyBox. So this is just an operating system, sort of. It's like for the firmware. So we're not going to really be able to get much out of that. But maybe SMB password has something. And that's in user bin. So we actually have to CD out of here and go to user bin. And now we're looking for SMB password. And it does talk about a password and how user has no password. So yeah, there's some interesting information in here, but we'd have to dig deeper into it to see what was really going on. So FirmWalker is definitely a great tool to have in your toolkit for IoT hacking, but it's not the like one-stop shop. It won't find everything for you as it's just a bunch of scripts but it can definitely make your life a lot easier. And here again, it talks about the etc password.bak. So it's a great tool to have in combo with binwalk because you need binwalk in order to get to the file system. And once you're in the file system, FirmWalker can point you into useful directions to look at, but since it's an automated tool, you always want to verify everything and combining automated tools with manual scanning and manual investigation is always the best practice because just doing everything manually, you can see there are a bunch of different directories here. This would take forever to look at and even just the interesting information, there are a bunch of different files and directories to look at. So this will definitely help speed up your search for interesting information, but it's definitely not the only tool and you're going to need to know um, what to look for in these file systems. In my next video, I will be going over a tiny bit of firmware analysis and an interesting file to look at. And we'll then look into how to edit these files and edit this firmware to create a persistent remote backdoor on this Wi-Fi router. Then we'll look at some ways to upload the firmware to our target device. And just remember to only do this on devices you're authorized to do it on because hacking is illegal and get into a lot of trouble. And yeah, stay safe and stay active.